Bundeswehr, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to explain to you a little bit about time travel. Alright, let's cut to the chase. There's no way I could possibly talk to you about time travel in the amount of time that we're given. So, the best way for me to communicate my ideas on time travel is with a deck of cards, and I just so happen to have one with me. So check this out. First and foremost, I'm going to make a selection. Let's do this. I'm going to place this aside, and the Joker, which we will be using, um, it's going to help us, and it's going to guard this card the whole time. All right. Now, I would need a selection from an audience member, so please go ahead. Oh, before you select anything, let's make everything completely transparent and reverse these cards so you can see the face of the cards. That way you know I'm being honest. Go ahead. The five of clubs, perfect. And should you wish, you would be able to sign that as well. Now, it's only fair since we chose this card in a face-up pile that we return it into the face-up pile. So go ahead and say stop. Right there, perfect. And I'm just going to take these cards and spread them here. So let's spread these cards out just like that. I'm sorry, remind me again what the card that you selected was. It was the five of, was it the five of clubs? It's funny because if we take a really careful look, you got the five of diamonds, the five of spades, the five of hearts, Alas, no five of clubs. Just to make sure that nothing fishy is going on. Let's take a look at the back of these cards to make sure everything is also standard. Remember this was a time travel trick, wasn't it? And do you remember that I placed a selection here before you even selected your card? Let's have a look. Indeed. The one and only signed five of clubs. That, ladies and gentlemen, is and was spread and butter. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the explanation of spread and butter. My name is Chris Ramsey. And first and foremost, thanks to Assad from 52 Cards for featuring this video. And thanks to you guys for checking it out. I really hope you enjoy it. This is an original trick I came up with. And it's got a few moves, but it's got one particular slight which I'm really proud of, which I can't wait to show you guys. Um, if you guys want to see some more stuff, definitely check out my channel. and The link should be up there somewhere. But uh, other than that, let's get into it. I will get into crediting a little bit later and during the explanation, so no worries there. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. So what you're going to need is two things. First and foremost, a deck of cards. I prefer a borderless deck of cards for table tricks. It just uh, hides a lot of discrepancies. And your deck is also going to need two identical jokers. All right, so the cat's out of the bag. There's a dupe here somewhere. There it is. I like jokers. You can use a different dupe if you like. I just like jokers. It's organic and uh, comes to the deck. So the next thing you will need is a surface. So either a close-up pad, a mat, or any type of soft surface that will allow you to do this with. You'll also want it to be large enough that when you spread, you can see all the cards, but that when you do this with, they don't end up falling off the close-up pad. So this is a little bit small. I would suggest something bigger. If you have a table, even better. Practice on your bed, on the couch, whatever you like, put a blanket over the table. It's all good. The setup is a very easy one. One joker is lost into the deck and shuffled. At this point, I even like having the spectator shuffle the deck because if there's anywhere, um, someone in the audience that you know thinks, oh, well, he, what if I shuffle the deck? You know, it, it just gets rid of skepticism and it's a nice little subtlety that you can, anytime that you can have the spectator shuffle, I think why not, right? So you have them shuffle that deck and then you say, I'm going to get a selection. Now, if you want to use the time travel pattern, fine. If you want to use magic pattern, whatever you want, it's all good. I like the time travel thing because I think it's, uh, I think it's fitting. So you're gonna go ahead and look for a selection. All you're doing here is looking for that joker. 
So you're gonna place this, which is the Joker, you're gonna place this aside and say, I'm gonna use the Joker as a guard and it's gonna help me out for this trick. And so that justifies why the Joker is there. And uh, most laymen don't know that there's more than one Joker in a pack, you'd be surprised. So I'm gonna leave that Joker on top of the selection. Next up, you will need the audience to select a card. Now, in this case, what's great is that you spread the cards and then you say, just wait, I'm gonna make it more fair and more transparent. I'm gonna have you select it from a face-up pile. Now, the reason for this is you're conditioning your audience to get used to you using the joker to flip the card. So you take the joker, you reach around with your right hand, so not the left hand, you reach around here, you scoop, and you just simply do that little ribbon spread thing put the joker back. And so like like I said, the justification is that it's more fair if they choose from a face up deck, nothing fishy is going on. Once they've done that, so let's say they choose this card, feel free to have them sign it. I do not think it's necessary when a freely card chosen is, is chosen from a face up deck or named, there's no point in signing it, but if, you, if you're one of those people, go ahead and sign it. Once it's signed, you simply say, well, since you chose from a face-up deck, we're going to put it back in the deck face-up. That's all the justification you need here. And you want to have it in that sort of bottom third around there, or the top third, however you look at it. But the easy way to get around that is just basically to riffle your thumb down here and ask them to say stop whenever they like. So they go stop, 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 stop. <laughs> I'm always down there. So you just basically put it wherever you want. And there you go. So it's down there. What you're going to do here is you're going to perform a Tamri's perpendicular control. So if you're familiar with the DPS, DPS is where the card goes in and comes out diagonally, right? And so it's like a diagonal jog. And, and then you steal it out in DPS. But that's not what we're going to be doing. We're going to start off as a DPS and then the card, instead of being left diagonal with your thumb here and your pinky down here is you're gonna slide it and make it go perpendicular. Hence, perpendicular control. So once again, card goes in here, perpendicular, but now you're gonna, so right when you're about to relax, your middle finger and ring finger is just going to pull this card maybe a half inch or so, so that when you spread it, you won't see it. Otherwise, once the card is lost in and we just tamarise perpendicular control it without pulling it deeper, what happens is that you're gonna be able to see that card protrude, which is a no-no. So to avoid that, once again, once it's in, you just simply pull as I'm doing here, whoop, just a little bit. Maintain pressure with the index, thumb, and middle finger. As soon as you let go, this will happen. The card will fall right out. So you'll feel that right away as you're doing it. Card goes in. As I'm here, I pull just a little bit. So the card is rather largely in jogged. You don't want it too much so that it shows on this side, but just enough so that when you put your hand down, and you go to spread it that everything's hidden. So once the card is in here, your hand stays down, keel downwards, and you're going to spread rather slowly, just like this and very deliberately, so that you can see every card. This is where the magic happens, because now one of the cards is actually vanished. And you can invite your audience to even poke around, they won't find the card, which is kind of cool. So once you've, once you've gotten this down, this sort of spread thing, once you've gotten that down, what you'll want to do is grab the joker. Now this is where, as you remember, we were flipping the deck around using the joker. And this is why, because we're going to do that again. So we're going to say your card's completely gone. It's nowhere to be seen, not even on this side, nor is it on this side over here. And at this point, I've switched it out. And that is the fun move. That's the spread and butter switch. Once this is perpendicular controlled, and once it is spread here, watch this, this is, this is mind blowing. So the joker comes around, I'm gonna do this in really slow motion. You're going to push maybe 
10 cards, so all the way up until that card that is side jogged. And now you're gonna start flipping, right? You're gonna drop the joker and watch what happens. One card, look, I'll just let go of my hand so you can see what's going on. One card is standing up. It's sort of saying like, take me, hold me, switch me. So it's exactly what you're gonna do. It's just all organic. As I drop this joker, drop it with my middle finger, my index and thumb, just pinch that one and I keep going. Left hand here is just gonna spread the cards to hide that little block discrepancy and make everything really nice. And then I'm left with the selection, which I'm gonna switch out and I'll get to that in a second. But that essentially is the, is the switch. And one more time, this goes in here. You're here, you come around with a joker, you push until you get there, now you start flipping, and in one motion, that's been switched out. Now you can, you can perform the Mexican turnover, which we'll get into. So let me do that at, uh, at half speed so you guys follow. This goes in. This is pulled, hands down. This is spread. Come over here. Push in a block. Now look at that, look at that. Now this is one of the reasons you want that borderless card because look, it really hides that discrepancy nicely. And then you're left here. Final move is, well, this one's face down, they believe that this is the selection you've made or the prediction or whatever it is at the beginning. Here's the final move. This is the Mexican turnover. And that's all there is to it. So the Mexican turnover, there are many, many, many handlings on this move. Uh, the first time I've seen it, one of the first publications of it is in the Expert at the Card Table by S.W. Erdenes. But there are, I mean, Marlowe, I think, has a whole book devoted to this. Um, you know, uh, Larry Jennings has work on this, Ken Krenzel, so lots and lots of people put, uh, put a lot of time and effort into Mexican turnover. I've, I've seen Bebel perform this and he uses it all the time and his is just so great, it's just so fast. Uh, what you're doing is, I'll do it without the move so you can see what it's supposed to look like. This is what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like you're just turning the card over. Now I'm not doing the move, I'm just turning a card over. So if you practice turning a card over, that'll give you an idea of what it's supposed to look like. So when you do do the switch, when you do do the switch, this is what it's supposed to look like. I like using this hand because it prevents this one from sliding around and also pops it up nicely so that when you're here, you can perform that switch. If you're not comfortable with doing this, really, really easy, you can just pick it up and drop that one. Isn't that weird? Isn't that like something happened, but you're not sure? Lehman don't even see it because this is supposed to be the selection. This is supposed to be the joker. So all you're doing is grabbing it and dropping down that one. Simple as that. I mean, if you want to do this action where you just you come in and you grab the last one and drop it, feel free. So there are many, many ways you can do the Mexican turnover, but essentially you end with that. And that about wraps up spread and butter. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this original trick. Listen, um, I sell magic tricks for a living and develop them uh, for a living. And this is something that I was gonna put out to the magic community. I thought, you know what, what better platform to get it out there than, uh, than on Asad's YouTube channel. I think a lot of you are eager for good magic and are hungry for good magic, but the problem I think with most of YouTube um, this is not including uh, Assad's channel, but the problem with most of YouTube is the crappy teachings. People don't know how to teach. People teach things that they're not familiar with or that they've not put time into. They don't credit it properly. So, you know, I think I think it, I think Assad is doing right um, in the magic and slash YouTube community by by really taking the time to teach things. So. That's, that's the reason that I agreed to put something out on his channel, really. I wouldn't have done this on anyone else's channel. This is, uh, I respect what he does. And so I really hope you guys enjoyed this and take it to the next level. Remember, 
I don't wanna see you put up a tutorial for this the next day or a performance the next day. Put the time in, you know, give it a few weeks, give it some hours of practice and really put the time in and, uh, and then, you know, send me a link and I'll be happy to check it out and let you know what I think and, you know, jam ideas with you. It's, I love magic, I love card magic. So if you guys wanna, you know, jam, feel free. If you put the time in, I'll be there to listen to you for sure. So thanks to Assad, thanks to you guys for watching this. And before I go, I just want to do a little bit of uh, crediting. Um, anything involving the hideout and the spread has been done by so many people. Ken Krenzel has uh, put a lot of work into that. Um, I know that this is where I sort of got it from. He would take a card in a face-up spread and he would perpendicular control it there. So he would just like slide it in. Whoop square it up and now he would be in a position where he could DPS the card and palm it out. Um, but many people have played around with the spread hideout using an odd back card, etc. And I think in Art of Astonishments Volume 3 is where it talks about the perpendicular hideout in the spread. Um, but I've not seen anybody do a switch with it, so that's my sort of contribution. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I'm repeating myself, but thank you so much for tuning in and uh, check out my channel. I've got some pretty neat videos there and hopefully keeping it up to date a lot more these days. So check it out. Look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Peace out.